Hello, Professor Krasner's ENG 102 class. This is Dan Calandro, uh, your librarian here at Mercer County oh. Community College. I hope you're all doing well. And today we're going to go over where you guys can find some resources in our databases for your first uh, research paper. You guys have read a few short stories, and we're going to take a look in our databases to try and find some more information on them. Keep in mind that if you need to pause this recording, feel free, rewind it, and of course, you'll see my contact info. So go ahead and send me an email or get in touch with me, and I'll do my best to help you out. So first, you guys have read uh, three different short stories here. You've read, uh, sorry, a poem, Dolce Est Decorum Est, uh, Stephen Crane's War is Kind, and Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried. Just an FYI on the things they carried, as your professor notes here in the email to me, you read the uh, chapter, The Things They Carried, from the larger work, The Things They Carried. So it's a little confusing. But if you guys can, try and find information on the uh, chapter or the short story, the things they carry. You don't necessarily need the whole book, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and take a look and see what we can find in the databases. Before we do that though, it's important to come up with a list of keyword terms related to your topic. So your first keywords can simply be the title of the short story or poem that you read. Uh, it could be the author, here's Stephen Crane sitting there in his uh, uh, uniform. Uh, even though he wasn't a soldier, he liked to dress as one. You guys can go and search about war and soldiers, propaganda, patriotism, survival, all of these things will work for your uh, paper and paper topic. It's really a matter of what you're interested in. Each of these keyword terms, when we combine them, as you'll see in a second, uh, will help you narrow down your search because you don't want just everything on uh, the things they carried. You probably want something specific. You will see in our databases two different types of sources. You're going to see what we call popular sources and scholarly sources. A scholarly source is something that has been written by an expert, uh, someone who is say, uh, uh, English literature critic. They would have written these sources. And then it goes through a peer reviewed process where other experts review them before they are published. So I'm going to guess that there is probably some sort of peer reviewed requirement for this paper. Uh, there's probably going to be a peer reviewed requirement for all the papers. So keep in mind that your scholarly sources are what you're looking for in these databases. You might also be able to use your popular sources. These would be newspapers, magazines, things like that. Uh, keep in mind that because they are popular, they are not peer reviewed, even though they may be written by an expert. They do not go through that peer reviewed process and therefore they do not count. Uh, books for what it's worth, pretty much always count as peer reviewed. We'll do books in another video, uh, but for right now, we're just gonna focus on the databases where you can find articles. All right. One final thing before we go to the databases, as I said, you can narrow down your search results by combining your keyword terms. You do that by using this Boolean operator up at the top here, and. So if you want, what you would do is you would type in, say, Stephen Crane and soldiers. You would type in the things they carried and Vietnam. Because you want articles that are on both of those topics, that yellow shaded area in the middle there. Articles that are about both uh, uh, of your keyword terms. And if you, of course, you can go ahead and keep typing in more keyword terms. You would just be adding another circle and that yellow area would keep getting smaller and smaller. So if you want to do that, feel free. Great, now let's take a look at the databases and see what we can find. In order to get to the database page, you simply head to the main Mercer website, www.mccc.edu. You can scroll down and you'll find a section that says current slash returning students, and you'll see right there, library services. That's our link. We have two ways of finding articles in the databases. Way number one is right here where it says MerSearch. You can just go ahead and start searching. What's nice about MerSearch is that you can search through multiple databases at once. So you can go ahead and type in uh, whatever it is you're looking for, and it'll search through a whole bunch of different databases. So you don't necessarily have to go and pick one. So here we'll start off with the things they carried, and it'll run our search. And you'll see we're gonna get lots of search results because this is uh, a search that will also go through uh, physical books, electronic books, even DVD sources that we have. So you're gonna see a lot of search results here. You can probably tell right there, three and a half million search results. That's quite a lot. 
Obviously, we're not going to go through three and a half million because we're going to be here for a very long time. So what you want to do is this. You want to narrow down your search results. We discussed that just a couple seconds ago by using the Boolean operator and. So for example, we could take one of these keyword terms here and we can type in the things they carried and let's say survival. Right, there we go, and search. So now it's looking for the things they carried and survival. One of the other things that may be helpful is that when you guys do your search, if you're looking for a particular phrase, like the things they carried, or as kind, et cetera, if you put that phrase in these double quotes like I'm doing now and search, it's going to find all those words next to each other. So it's going to find the things they carry right next to each other. The other thing, too, you'll notice is that uh, when you do these phrase searches, it really narrows down your search results. We're down to 687, so we went down quite a lot. You'll also see, too, that sometimes we have uh, the things they carried, pathogenic effects on Australians' cane toad. Wow, fascinating. We don't want that, okay? So what you want to do is you want to try and eliminate these kind of unnecessary search results. So what you can do is you can say, like, you know, uh, not cane toad. What's probably better, though, is just type in and O'Brien. This way, it'll just get you the author. Oops, I got to do the apostrophe there, because you're not really interested in what these other people have to say about the Australian cane toad, as fascinating as that may be. So there we go. We now have our 300 search results. It contains the phrase, the things they carried, it's about survival, and it's about O'Brien. 300 is still a lot. So again, if you want, you can scroll through. Probably don't want to waste too much time doing that. What you may also want to do is, if you get stuck for keyword terms, take a look on the left-hand side here. See where it says subject terms? If you click on more, it's going to show you a whole bunch of keyword terms related to your search, to your topic. And if you scroll down, you can see if there's anything interesting that you can click on, and you can add it into your search. So here, memory, you can click on military studies, morality, and you can see five, they can add them all up, and that'll be how many search results you wind up with. If you want to do that, fine. If not, that's okay. You most definitely want to do this though. Once you've run your search, you want to go over here on the left and make sure you select the scholarly peer reviewed option. This is going to give you your scholarly peer reviewed search results. And when you do that, you can see it really narrows it down quite a bit, okay? Sometimes you can also do where it says journal article. These will also give you scholarly peer-reviewed search as well. Sometimes uh, the two overlap, and if it's not necessarily uh, flagged as peer-reviewed, college literature is peer-reviewed, but for some reason it wasn't flagged as that. So nothing's perfect. All right, anyway, so you want to use peer-reviewed or you want to use journal article. And then what you can do is if you find one that's interesting, go ahead and click on one of your articles. So here we'll use this first one and it's going to take us to the login page. You can just go ahead and type in your my Mercer information, your uh, first name dot last name, and then your password is your birth date in this format here. And then log in. Once you do that, it will go ahead and take you to the article. Now with MerSearch, what's nice about MerSearch is uh, it can say, okay, this article that we found here is actually in the JSTOR database. Sometimes it'll tell you that this article is in multiple databases, and you just simply have to pick which database you want to use. It's called the Full Text Finder, and when it pops up, you'll know because it will say Full Text Finder, and then you just simply click on the link that you would like to use, and it will take you to that database. All right, there is our article. Couple things to point out. First, uh, when you take a look at this, you'll see the title, the author, that sort of thing, the journal, all that stuff. What's going to be helpful for you is, you can see that this article is 25 pages. So what you wanna do is, see over here on the left, usually somewhere floating around these uh, search result screens are what's called abstracts or summaries of the article. Here it literally said this address, essay addresses blah, blah, blah. And it tells you what the article is about. So take a minute or two and read these abstracts because they're gonna tell you very quickly whether or not this article is going to be on your topic. If you're not interested in these things, then you can skip it. So if you're not interested in uh, American imperialism, then this article is probably not for you. So you can skip it. 
And if it turns out it is for you, great. You can actually see the articles right here and you can flip the pages over here and read it and go through. You can also, if you want, download the PDF of the article and that will give you basically this in a PDF format. So it's helpful to uh, hang on to that. What you can also do is once you find this article and it's good and you want to hang on to it, you can of course download the PDF. Uh, you do have these share options as well. There's usually some kind of email button where you can go and email these articles to yourself. Also what may be helpful is you want to go ahead and cite these articles. If you click on cite this item, it's going to show you all the different citation formats available. And you can simply copy this, paste it into your Word document or Google Docs, whatever you want to use. And you'll have your MLA formatted citation. Now keep in mind that these things are very good in terms of generating a citation. However, they're not so great at you know making sure everything's perfect. So they're basically just going to spit out what's there. So because this is in all caps, you'll see in our site, this is in all caps. Well, this shouldn't be in all caps. So it should be capital C, capital M, capital T, right? And everything else lowercase. But all the commas and periods, that stuff is correct. What's uh, italicized is correct. So you just have to double check and make sure because it's good, but it's not perfect. So there, that's how you can grab a citation. So you can see we have the ability to very quickly find articles that are fairly specific and on our topic. So uh, if you want, you can certainly use MerSearch and find a whole bunch more articles. And if you want, like say you're interested in this article here, you can of course click on it and it'll kick you out to the database where it is. And each database basically has the same functions. They just look different. So your save PDF is up here, your site is up here, your abstract is here. So again, all the same functions are here, email as well are here, but they're just in a different spot. If you want, you don't necessarily have to go into this uh, database to take a look at the article. You can just very quickly click on the preview button for these and you will see here it gives us a abstract. You can see too, it also gives us a site option. You can click on site. We just have to tell it that we want the uh, MLA format. There it is. And it'll give us the MLA format. We can also email the article to ourselves. Click on that email button and you can send it to your Mercer, Gmail, Yahoo account, whatever you want. So all of these options are available for you. The one final thing I'm going to point out here very quickly is that your databases, if you have one good article, you can find other articles in the database. If you notice here in our ProQuest interface, there's actually a related items box here that shows you a whole bunch of other similar articles to this one. You can then go ahead and click on it and it'll take you to that article. You can see that there's a list of subject terms as well that will uh, have boxes here that you can click on and search and it'll show you more. Finally, if you guys wind up using a scholarly peer reviewed article, just like you're doing giving a works cited page or list of references, the articles are going to do that as well. Sometimes they're contained here, what they call footnotes, or sometimes they look basically like your uh, MLA formatted document. So here, let me open up this one here. So you can see at the very end of the article, it's going to have a list of sources that the author used. Okay. Yes, they used footnotes too, but they call them notes. So if you want, you can go into these footnotes and you can take a look and say, okay, I really liked footnote three or the in-text citation for this one. You can go and take a look and say, okay, here, they used another, uh, uh, another novel by uh, Tim O'Brien. Okay, here's another one, Images of the Vietnam War. So you can go and you can find these additional resources in uh, their paper. So if they use something and you really like what they say, there's our works cited page. You can go and you can hopefully find it uh, in our databases. And of course, if you can't, uh, I'll do another video talking about interlibrary loan. But see here, Tim O'Brien and Gender Defense of the Things They Carried, and it gives you the citation information for that article. So you can go and you can find it. All right, so that is MerSearch. MerSearch is a great database, but you can see if you are not careful with your keyword terms, you're gonna just get so much stuff. So what you then may want to do is try to use a subject specific database. And these are over here on the left under where it says quick links. 
And if you click on it, you're going to go ahead and see your list of databases. For this one, if you are interested in, say, just uh, literature criticism, we have two databases that will be helpful for that. They're both under the humanities section. And the first one is the Gale Literature Database. And the other one is the Literary Reference Center. I'll show you Gale first, because I like Gale the best. These are going to contain just literature criticism. If you remember, when we ran that first search, we wound up with uh, Australian cane toad stuff, and we didn't want that. Well, here, this is going to uh, basically get rid of that problem for you, because there's not going to be anything here on the Australian cane toad unless it was a character in some novel. Um, it's just going to be literature criticism, just basically stuff like you saw here uh, in this ProQuest database, philosophy and literature, or in our uh, college literature one here that we found in JSTOR. So sometimes this is a better place to start because it's already giving you literature sources. So if we want, we can do another war is kind search. And again, I'm putting it in quotes because I want to find that phrase. And here, notice we just have 41 search results. And we can scroll through and see if there's anything interesting. It's going to look the same. We go ahead, click on the title of one of our articles. It's going to, again, provide us that information about the article, who wrote it, the source it came from, things like that. So there's the title, there's the source, there's who wrote it. Okay. Now, unfortunately, this one does not have an abstract. Uh, some of them do, some of them don't in this database. But again, this one's not too long. It's 1,500 words. I think you guys can, can swing that. But there you go, there's your article, and you can scroll through. And again, if you want, you can go ahead, you can click on site, you can download, you can do a send it to, that's what they call an email, print all of that stuff for your article. And again, if you look back at your results, we'll go back, we can go ahead and click on another one. And again, it's going to be basically the same thing. And there's your article. Again, title, author, source, and again, you can click on site. And because this is a literature database and uh, English uses the MLA format, it's going to default to MLA. And there you go. With general ones like ProQuest and like with MerSearch, when you click on the site, it's going to ask you what citation format you want. So if we click on site, it's going to say, which one do you want? You want the MLA one. If it doesn't tell you which edition, it should default to the most recent one. If it's asking you which edition, you would like the eighth edition. That's the most recent one. So there, I've selected the MLA eighth edition. And again, you can use this database for War is Kind. You can use it for, uh, what was the other story you read? Uh, oh, and one, the poem, that's it. Oh, there's lots on this with five months. So again, we can go ahead. We can put that title of the poem in quotes. We can go ahead and search for it and find our articles on it. And there's 181. So again, that's quite a lot. So let's type in and nationalism, see if that comes up with anything and search. And now we're down to 24. So again, the more keyword terms you put in, the fewer search results you're going to get. Okay. And again, we can click on one of these and see if there's anything interesting. One of the things that may be helpful is if you have a particularly long article here, this one's over 7,000 words. So this is fairly long. If you are in a PDF, if you are in a um, website, if you are in something like this, you can either do control F, that's your shortcut for find, or actually there's a search within entry here. So if I type in the title of our Poem. I can hit the search button and it's going to now show me where in the document that word or phrase appears. So if you're interested in something in particular and you have a very long article, you can go ahead and do that and it will find it for you. If you look here, I ran my search. It says search terms are on page 203 and 209. So if I click on 203, there it is. We have noted that and there it is, page 209. And it's nice because if you have some big long article and it talks about a whole bunch of Wilfred Owen's poetry or his life or whatever it may be, okay, you can go ahead and use this to quickly hop through it and find your, uh, what it is you're interested in. Where did it go? There. 
it found it down there. Okay, so that cuts down a little bit on the time spent figuring out if this article is good for you. Uh, and it can be helpful too, because if you've got something really long, I know reading long stuff on a computer, st computer screen, basically for lack of a better word, sucks. Uh, so this is a way to say, okay, here's my stuff. I now know on these couple of pages, this is where they talk about it. And I can really focus in on that. Okay. So that's Gale literature. I really like Gale literature. You can see that there's a lot of interesting good stuff in here. Uh, so pretty much whatever you're going to do this semester, if it's literature based, this database, the scale literature database is going to be great for you. All right, final database I'll show you really quickly is the Literary Reference Center. The Literary, Literary Reference Center is pretty good as well. Um, I tend to find myself using Gale Literature or Mer Search first and then coming here if I really stuck or I'm just finding way too much stuff. So again, we'll put in the title of our poem. We hit search and it'll go ahead and find it for us. Now, one of the things that I really like that's in here is if I can see it really quickly. Okay. So in here, you guys will find something that is called master plots, master plots. These are great because they are essentially like spark notes for college students. If you read something and you have no idea what the heck is going on or what they mean or what the point of all this is, you can go ahead and you can use your master plots here to get a couple of things. First thing, for me as a librarian, what I like to do is sometimes look in master plots and see all these subject terms, right? If I can't come up with more subject terms, master plots gives me a whole bunch, right? I'm not smart enough to come up with all of these on my own. See this patriotism one? I don't think I have that in mind. I think I've got nationalism. Oh no, I do have patriotism. Wow, I am that smart. Good job, me. All right. But again, if you can't come up with these, you can find them. For you guys, what's nice is you will see that master plots, the entries are kind of divided into little sections here. So you'll see something that says the work or the plot, and it basically tells you what goes on in the story or the poem. There's usually another section that says like themes, meanings, interpretation, something like that, that gives you a whole bunch of stuff. Everything's going off at once. The oven, the phone, this is great. Hello. <laughs> so you'll see in here that it covers both what's going on and kind of why this stuff Hi, is important. Okay. So there's one master plot entry. If you look here, we've got a second one. Uh, there's a second master plot entry. So forms and devices, themes and meanings. So here it tells you all this kind of information that'll be really helpful for you. And again, if you want, you can do email, you can do save site. And they have other documents as well, yes. okay? <laughs> More uh, standard database type well, stuff as well. So if you want, you can start yeah, here, kind of get a general, like, general like, idea like, of what oh, you're interested oh, in, you and then you can go and you can go into the other databases and find some <laughs> more specific things, okay? Yeah. So I hope that helps Absolutely. with the overview of the databases. Again, if you guys get stuck or lost or confused, please, you can send an email. We'll you can ask for help uh, through Gmail. We can do a Google Hangout if you want. So you can go ahead and basically we'll do a share screen. I can show you where to search, how to search, uh, different databases, things like that. If you have quick questions, you may have seen it really briefly on the library homepage. You'll see that we have a chat here. So if you want, you can use this chat and you can go ahead and send us a message and a librarian will get back to you and say, okay, here's what I can do to help. You'll see that uh, Gmail information here as well. So all of this we have for you to get in touch with us. So if there's anything that you guys need or you get stuck, please just let us know. We'll be more than happy to help you. All right, I hope that was helpful. I'm sorry if it was too long and boring, but hey, you know, what else are we going to do? <laughs> if you need anything, please don't hesitate to ask. All right, thank you guys. Bye for now.